Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carly. And I'm Edge. And today we're watching Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 3. So in last episode, we got to meet Rico properly, I guess. Um, we saw a little bit of her school life. There was a funny little action sequence um, involving Ghetto, uh, some of the goons trying to assassinate Rico. And then we also got a little bit of a glimpse into Gojo's power, but it's nowhere near the full extent to what we're used to. Yeah, no way near season one Gojo level, that's for no. sure. No, that's right. He tried reversal red and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, he hadn't mastered it yet. No. Um, also in the episode, Toji, Daddy Fush Fush, right? He was gambling and eating. It's kind of like building to him getting involved. Yeah, people said there was like some symbolism with the food. Like you're not supposed to leave the chopsticks in the food like that. It's like a bad symbol of like okay. death or something. Okay. Um. So yeah, there was definitely a lot of symbolism and meaning towards his character mm -hmm. in that whole sequence. Yeah. We know what kind of guy he is. He's willing to take risks. Yeah. Willing to play a little dirty. Yeah. Well, I think uh, because the others have failed... He's about to, you know, step in and it's going to be a lot tougher for Ghetto and Gojo and Rico. Uh, we know Kuroi has been taken as well. That's how last episode ended off with that banger of a cliffhanger. Yep. So I guess that's where we're going to lift off this episode. Also, starting from this episode, we're going to be trialing a new sort of segment. It's, what is it, like MVP of the episode or something, Yeah, right? something like that. We'll work on the name. <laughs> yeah, so each episode we're basically going to, like discuss who we think the star of the episode was yeah and then hopefully that will ignite some discussion in the comments as well and we can like track it or something as well yeah we want it to be like a little bit interactive mm -hmm. and also if you guys are interested in getting the full uncut reaction to this episode i'll leave a link to our patreon down below also if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe it would really help us out but anyway should we get into it let's get into it He's gonna feel bad now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh no, they better save her. They're so close to those two. Yeah. Oh shit. All right. Okay. Yeah, she's gonna feel so bad. Say goodbye. No, it's crap enough that she has to do this shit with Tengen Sama in the first place. <laughs> yep, wipe them tears. Okay, she means business now. Kind of like a like foster mum or whatever, you know. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Beach episode. Fun in the sun. <laughs> oh, shit. What the heck? Is this the same place Ghetto was chilling in season one? No, I don't think so. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sus. Oh, nice. <laughs> Where did they fly to? I'm pretty sure it said Australia. Australia? I'm not sure. Like, we missed it. Represent. We missed the sub. Not Australia. Hey! 
Hibara. Okay. You. I'm so happy to see Nanami. <laughs> I'm thrilled. What the hell is that? It probably is Australia, actually. <laughs> He's psychotic. Yeah. She was having fun at the beach. Aww. I feel so sorry for her. Me too. Oh shit. Oh yeah, it takes more of a toll on him. Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's nice. I never want this to end. No. Why can't they just stay here? I like Ghetto too much now. It's pissed me off. Yeah. No, I'm sad now. She seems more like an older sister than a like a foster mum. Yeah. Really nice OST. Mm. Probably have to mute it all, but it's still <laughs> yeah, really sucks. nice. Okay. Protected by our Tengen. Yeah, Tengen Sama. Yeah, yeah, he enjoyed every second. What are we doing here? It's Daddy Fush Fush. Oh, you piece of crap! Yeah, yeah, you didn't even remember your own bloody son's name, you piece of... How did he get through the infinity there? Or in the barrier. They were supposed to be safe there. Oh, okay, he waited for the optimal opportunity. Oh my gosh. His guards were down. The infinity kind of like ran out or whatever. He was like depleted He's like of energy. like tired and stuff, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, great. Oh dear. Oh shit. This is going to be some of the fight from the trailer. Oh, yeah, this thing around his neck, right? I remember that. Oh, oh shit. for goodness sakes. What? Heavenly Pact. Oh, hold on. Gifting him with... Physical prowess, okay. Th that's like Maki. Maki's got the same thing. Does she have a heavenly pact? Yeah, so like when they're not... I think when they're not born with cursed energy, it gets made up for in a different way. Like Maki has more physical prowess. Okay, right. Yeah, as well. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, he's got like, quite a lot of physical prowess. <laughs> Shit. Oh, no, shit. No, no, Yes, Gojo. <laughs> Those same eyes. Gonna use blue? Yeah. No, uh, not yet. Oh. The animation's crazy. Yeah, the cursed tool, right. Cursed tools always have hair on them. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Dude, this dude is so quick! Yeah, what the heck? It, this is blue. Hey, look at this animation! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Mappa have delivered! <laughs> oh. oh, that was swift. <laughs> that was so sick. That was the best that that attack has looked by far. <laughs> My gosh. 
Oh, ew. Oh my gosh. He's confusing him. Oh yeah, he can't sense the energy because it's all around him now. Oh no, just Oh, he's there, he's there! Like a spider. This guy is next level! Oh no! No! Oh yeah, this was from the trailer. Oh no, I'm physically weak. I don't have any physical prowess. Oh my gosh, man! This guy's wiping the floor with Gojo! Oh, okay, that's why the bloody Infinity's doing nothing. I'm sweating. What? Ew, no, get off his face. Dude, he made quick work of him too. Like, that wasn't even close. No, I hate goodbyes, man. Oh, yeah, adorable. Really nice. This is terrible, man. What the heck? This sucks. Oh, shit. Oh, what the heck? Oh, this is cool. Cool. What? Yeah, true. Yeah. That's why I always like that guy. Oh, what? Oh, they're gonna back themselves. What the heck? No way. Yeah, she's only of like. You do. She's like young teens or whatever. He hasn't even lived yet. Oh. Look at yes, Geto, but man. I'm so scared about what this means. Got sniped in the head, man. Oh, you're a piece of shit. Dude, I just started sweating. <laughs> oh. Oh dear. Oh, oh shit. Next episode. No, no freaking way. No freaking way. What are we doing? No, what are we doing? That was an absolute roller coaster. What the heck? <laughs> so we start off and it's like a beach vibe. It's all oh, chill. Yeah, why do they do no, that they, to us? These sneaky scumbags, the whole lot of them, right? The author, the animators, all of them. They're sickening. Okay, to the core. They don't care about our emotions. No, because Oh, they set it up so nice, and then they make you feel really, really sorry for Rico and everything that it means for her to, like, assimilate or whatever with Tengen-sama and all this shit. Um, and then you set up a fight 
with Gojo and Toji and you're like, okay, well, Gojo's the man. That's Sensei right there, right? And then Sensei gets obliterated mm. and he doesn't even lay a finger on Daddy Fush Fush. No. Can't. Then you got that lovely moment with Ghetto being a nice, nice gentleman. Making us love him even more. That's right. And he's like, no, you know what? Screw the plan. We're going home. And then Rico gets sniped in the head. What the hell? Sniped in the head, dead. Like, gone. That's it. That really, like, just shook me to my bloody soul. Oh, there was that nice goodbye between her and Karoi. Nah, Karoi's dead too. Yeah, Karoi's... Imagine what he did to frickin' Karoi. Yeah, Karoi, yeah, 100%. No. How does Gojo survive, by the way? Because we know he question. does, but, like, I'm very confused because man's just been, like, carved open. Yep, down to his, like, leg or something. Yeah. So did he just do the same thing as he did before? No, no, no. I don't it know what's wouldn't happened. wouldn't have missed his vitals this time, though. No, I don't know what's happened. But essentially, Toji's curse tool, what was the phrasing they used? Cancel out the curse technique? Or not right. cancel out, but, like removes it yeah okay um now because he's got the heavenly pact lucky i watched season one thank goodness for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i would have forgotten that term i think uh mecha maru also has that as well but it's oh. different but it's different it's like i essentially i think the easiest way to explain it I, i'm pretty sure he explained it pretty easy it's like yeah. when you're not born with cursed energy something else makes up for it in its place so with Maki, we know, like, she's very gifted physically. Yep. She's very quick. She's very strong. Yes. Um, And then with Mecha Maru, I'm pretty sure he didn't, he didn't have limbs. I can't remember if yes. it was the arms or the legs. Yes, okay. Maybe it was the legs, but then he got a shitload of cursed energy. Right. Okay, so Toji, I don't know what his deal is, but his pack seems pretty damn strong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because... Um, he was so quick, and then Gojo tried that thing where he got rid of all the cover so he could see him properly. I just find that amazing. It makes so much sense now in season one where Gojo's always got the infinity. Yeah, yeah. You it does make why. a lot of sense He got now. messed up. That was so messed up. That was so messed up. Like, they start you off with, like, Gojo getting a stab, and you're already like, oh... Yeah, I I remember that from the trailer. I do. I remember that from the trailer, but... Yeah. But then Gojo gets turned into the shredded. <laughs> oh. The animation sequence for Blue, by the way. Laps, oh, it whatever it's called. Stunning. Limitless Blue. Yeah. So we got Blue in the background. Um, oh, yeah, the blue. Yeah, JJK's <laughs> very blue all the time. There's the, mm. the whole emphasis on the sky and the sea. I've noticed this season quite a bit. Look, I did debate with you a little bit that the background should have been purple today, but you were right. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> he doesn't know hollow purple yet. <laughs> yeah. We know his power comes from the six eyes. Yep. He's not there yet at all. <sighs> no. Nah. Do we want to, like, theorise a little on... On how Gojo survives this? Yeah, we can do that. Um, because we do know he survives. Yeah. And I just love it that that encounter and that fight was so one-sided that you see why Gojo got so damn strong. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it calls, it calls straight back to this fight because um, someone snuck up on him, ambushed him, and whooped his ass. Mm -hmm. Now... Do we think Nanami and you have anything to do with Gojo's healing? Do we know anyone that has a healing ability, first of all? Uh, oh. That's a reverse technique. Reverse curse okay. energy or whatever it's called. Um, now, unless he's figured out how to do reversal red and then he somehow heals himself. Yeah. So we saw uh, Skuna do it. Right? Yes, yes. Kuna did it with Yuji, right? Yeah. Yep. Wouldn't do it with Junpei, though. But anyway, that's a different discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. We'll keep that in mind. Yeah, it's just got something to do with a reverse curse technique. Mm, yeah. I assume. Because it turns the negative energy into something positive and then it 
it heals. So, yeah, probably something to do with that. I don't know what exactly. He doesn't seem like he can do anything right now. He, like, literally looks dead on the ground. Yeah, yeah, I think he actually might have died. Like, how could you be alive after that? Yeah, a bit the dust for a little bit. Okay. So he gets revived using reversed curse or reverse curse technique. It's hard to say. I don't even know if that's the right term. Everyone knows what I'm talking about, though. Yeah. He's going to make daddy fush for shit his pants when he sees him again. Yeah, I don't know. This was really one-sided. Now, next episode, we're getting ghetto-verse. Yep. Toji. Yeah, you could just tell, like, oh, just ghetto's face there. Yeah, he was rocked to his core. It was like a delayed response. Yeah, and then, like, his... Uh, what are, what are his they curses called? came his out. Curses yeah. came out. Oh my yeah. gosh! And he was just like emotionless, like. Huh. You can see where Megami, like, you know how we saw in episode twenty three, I think it was, of the first season, Megami went nuts in that cave, yeah. that one episode. I see where he gets it from, honestly. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I, I can see where he gets it from. I just can't believe like how fast and everything he was. Like, Toji was just freaking bouncing off the the nothing there. Oh, my gosh, man. That he was crazy. reminded me of, like, a huntsman. Like, I was so just, like, terrified of him. I was like, ah. And when he was behind Gojo, when when Gojo was like, oh, he's after Rico. Mm. But then he was there. Oh, man. Oh, it was like shit. A bloody horror movie. Yeah, th- this episode really took it up a notch. Um, yeah. I did not expect Rico to die like that. What no. the heck? And she was just filled with hope that she would get to live her life, man. That, that was a warning from the animators and the author right there. That was a warning what if I've ever seen mean? one. And a threat. <laughs> and a threat. I feel threatened. <laughs> I feel threatened too. That was like, oh, you like the beach episode? Oh, you like the nice music? Oh, you like the bloody Ghetto and Gojo on a bike together in the OP? Yeah, guess what? Now you're going to be sad. <laughs> Ghetto's going to bloody swallow the bike and then turn it into some sword and slice Gojo's head off or some <laughs> bullshit. It's getting dark, all right? Yeah, it is getting dark. I don't like it's it. It's getting dark. I wonder if the fight with Toji is the breaking point for Ghetto. Like, what's going to happen with Ghetto? Because we know what eventually happens to him. Seeing yeah. him in Zero is yep. completely different. Yeah, I'm so changed. sad about that, can I say? I'm extremely sad about it now because they've made Ghetto so likable. He is just the loveliest guy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Now, the new segment, okay? We're working on a name. Maybe you guys can help us work out the name, right? But essentially, what we want to do, and we'll trial this for JJK, and if you guys like it, then we might put it into some other series as well. Essentially, we just want to... Choose our MVP for the episode and um, kind of talk about that. And that can ignite some discussion in the comments about, you know, your favorite moments with your favorite characters, stuff like that. I think it would be pretty cool to do and we can track it yeah, and then see who like the MVP of the season was or something like that. You know, um, it might be hard sometimes because the main character likely is going to win all the time. But I think with JJK, it's a bit different. There are so many characters. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think... Obviously, the MVP of the episode. This does not mean that I like this yes, person. Yes, yeah, you're right. It had right, to though. be Toji. It had to be Toji. He's the MVP of the episode, hands down. Um, if anyone else has a different MVP, I would like to hear your reasoning because this man just took down Gojo like it was nothing. Yes. Sniped Rico in the face, in the head. Like, he's done his job. Now he just needs to deal with Ghetto. And, and then, like, there it is. Done, right? Yeah. Job done. Boom. The Star Religious Group, that was a good hire on their part. I'm not going to lie. I think so. Yeah, hiring Toji. So wait, what did Toji end up doing? He ended up putting a fake bounty that like purposefully ran out at a certain time so that they would prepare themselves around that, yeah? Yeah, and but he was like, correct. And let their guard down and shit like that. Like it was crazy that's good. The worst. It was so well done from him. Yeah, he's the MVP of this episode. I will say from a fighting perspective, yes. From like a big brain perspective, yes. A different perspective might be like Rico. She wanted to claim back her life. Okay. She stood up for something. She said no. She was brave. She was like, this is not what I want to do. I want to, you know, see the world and spend some more time with my friends and family. Yeah. So I got to give her credit for that. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, yeah, Toji won. Toji won. And just to track the last two episodes. Yeah, episode one and two. I think I'll keep it an even split. 
and I'll say episode one, Ghetto. Yeah. Just because of how likable I found him. Episode two, Gojo. And episode two will go to Gojo with all of his riz. With all of his riz. Yeah. Purely like that that school scene in the chapel. <laughs> we'll probably split it between those two. Yeah. Uh, and then give this one to Toji, I think. I'm hoping an episode in the near future will star Nanami as MVP. Yeah, let's talk personally. about let's talk about Nanami quickly. Um, great to hear him. Uh, great to see him as well. I think he'll uh, take part in the next couple of episodes. Yeah, it was good to have like a little introduction though. Oh man, we lost our shit. <laughs> yeah, we did. I want to know more about his friend you. Mm. Um. I- have we seen him before? I'm trying to think. I don't want to make a big mistake here because we'll hear about it in the comments section. Who was the dude that was uh, fighting alongside him and Nanami left him and said that he'll give him a recommendation to become a grade one sorcerer? In season one. Yeah, it happened. It was very brief. And we're like, who's this dude with the oh, beanie? Oh, the beanie dude. Yeah, is that him? I don't know. I, I've not, I, I can't remember. That went over my head in season one. Interesting. Because it was such a brief appearance. Yeah, I'm not it sure. It felt quite ra- random, didn't it? Yeah. Interesting. All right, maybe it's him. Okay, but it's good to see Nanami nevertheless. Hopefully we get a little bit more um, Nanami in the next two episodes. I yep. can't believe there are only two left, but like it ramped it up this episode, so I can see why there are only two left. I mean, Gojo's out of commission here. Mm-hmm. For who knows how long as well. Mm. No, I do have to say that the way Toji, like, bought his time and just waited for the right moment. I mean, the man's patient. That was genius. He was planning this since Gojo was, like, six, an infant. <laughs> this dude was, like, a menace. Oh, shit. So, and the thing was, he could hold all of those curses inside of his curse scarf, right? His curse caterpillar scarf. Is that what Gojo uh, said? All those mini things were inside it. Right. Uh, okay. What were they called? Yeah, we we, we saw them um, briefly in season one. I forgot the name of it. The fly heads, I think. Yeah, yeah. We saw them in season one. Yeah. They didn't quite go to plan in season one, but anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. They're merely used as like a distraction sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they definitely worked. Mm-hmm. So like, you can kind of like compare this cursed scarf grub thing with uh, Megami's storage, right? Oh, interesting. How he how he stores the um the yeah. tools in the shadows. Yeah. Okay. Kind of similar. Yeah, but the two are completely different in the sense that one has cursed energy, one doesn't. Uh, this guy's got the heavenly pact, mm-hmm. which is more like mucky. I actually um really like that world building in JJK, that whole heavenly pack thing. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Like not everyone's the same. Not all the fighters are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, The sorcerers and stuff like that. They're not all tied to the same kind of like power scaling. and Yes. I, I, that's the wrong word, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I like how it's a little bit different as well. It mixes it up a bit. Mm. Yeah. I, I guess next episode, we're going to have Ghetto versus Toji. I'm more intrigued, not for the flashiness of the fight, but more what this means for Ghetto going forward and how it like impacts his character. Because I do feel like it is a bit of a countdown from when like we know Ghetto as he is to Ghetto in like season one and JJK zero. Mm-hmm. So we just need to like bridge that together. I really don't want it to happen because I'm just loving him so much. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely feels like there's some sort of countdown now mm-hmm. to that big event happening. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much for watching our reaction. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It would really help us out. For early access to all of our reactions, you can support us on Patreon if you'd like. And yeah, thank you so much again. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.